Hi everyone, my name is Ashley Carroll and I want to thank you for having me here at your coal plant in Pennsylvania to talk with you. A little bit about myself is that I have a master's degree in public health with a concentration in uh, health policy and system analytics. So what that means is that I help implement policies and procedures to help keep different communities safe and healthy. And I am actually from your beautiful state of Pennsylvania. I grew up here and have a lot of family in the Pittsburgh area, so I am glad to be back. And I am actually here to talk with you about an air pollutant known as sulfur dioxide. So you're probably wondering, why does this matter to me? Well, industrial facilities and power plants such as your coal plant are actually the largest producers of sulfur dioxide. And specifically in the Ohio Valley, which includes Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Kentucky, they all see the largest amounts of concentration of sulfur dioxide in the country, especially during the summer months. So with that being said, my brief presentation today is going to cover what it is, possible exposure, health concerns that may be linked to exposure, and then how you can protect yourself here at work. And before going into further detail, I just want to let you know that my main priority is to be here for you and for your work community. I know how hard you guys work. My grandfather also worked in a coal plant. Um, so I'm not here to tell you what to do or what needs to change. I want to listen to your concerns and to your questions that you may have. So getting into our first topic, what is it and how can you be exposed? So picture lighting a match and letting it burn. What you're smelling is sulfur dioxide. So the burning of fossil fuels such as coal, oil, and diesel will result in sulfur dioxide. And this burning is actually how it enters into the environment and into the atmosphere. And one of the largest environmental impacts it has is that of acid rain, and that can greatly impact sensitive plant life, animals, and waterways. However, I am more concerned with how exposure impacts you all. So people who live and work near coal plants, such as yours, is what's known as vulnerable populations. This means that you're most likely to be exposed and to face the largest impacts on your health. So to be exposed, you would need to um, be breathing in air that contains sulfur dioxide, However, it is possible for sulfur dioxide to come in contact with your eyes or skin if it is in liquid form. For it to be immediately dangerous to your life and health, it would have to meet a concentration level of 100 parts of sulfur dioxide per million parts of air. So to put that in perspective, occupational exposure levels lawfully range from 0 to 5 parts per million, which is enforced by OSHA. So due to the nature of your work, there is a possibility that you could be exposed to large amounts in a confined area. So moving on to my second topic, um, possible health concerns that may be linked with exposure. The largest effect this contaminant has on health is a variety of respiratory problems, both short-term and long-term. So short-term exposure symptoms can include burning of your nose and throat, difficulty breathing, and a severe obstruction of your airways. The more long-term effects that are seen to be associated with exposure is that of with changes to lung function. This, these changes can include respiratory illness, aggravation of heart disease, and a decrease in your lung defenses, meaning you're more likely to get a respiratory illness. So you're probably wondering, how can I prevent being exposed? This leads me into my last topic of discussion and how you can protect yourself here at work. The National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health provides guidelines for sulfur dioxide, and your safety manager will be up to date on that and utilize it to create safety plans and procedures for you all. Um, you should also be taking air samples in areas that there may be high levels of sulfur dioxide. However, taking constant air samples is time consuming, and I know you guys are busy, so what you can immediately do is grab your PPE that is provided for you and wear that in areas you may know there are high levels of sulfur dioxide. You can also make sure that your zones and areas or facility as a whole are properly ventilated and take steps and know the steps to take when there is an exposure. That would be moving to fresh air or flushing your eyes and skin if sulfur dioxide came into contact with them. So in conclusion, today we covered exposure routes, possible health concerns that are linked to exposure, and how you can protect yourself here at work. Sulfur dioxide can be a dangerous air pollutant if precautions are not taken to protect yourself and they can lead to severe respiratory problems. However, these effects can be treated and most exposed people do recover. So remember to wear your PPE and make sure everything is properly ventilated can help greatly protect you and your coworkers. Your safety manager and I are here to listen to any concerns you may have. Feel free to reach out to me. I will be leaving my contact information here today. So with that, I wanna thank you again for having me here 
and are there any additional questions that I can address at this time?